guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for our first episode of Seven Days Inspired by Pinterest Projects. Um, and I thought today we'd kick the um, little sort of mini series off with making some beautiful tags. Now, I have come across these particular tags and I've printed them off to kind of show you um, numerous times. They're constantly kind of <laughs> being showed up in my feed. Um, I don't know quite, you know, how it works, but I seem to get these ones quite a lot. And I absolutely love these. They're just beautiful. They're made by, I think it was somebody um, called Souvenir de la France. I will try and remember and uh, link the pin. <laughs> I've never done that before, so I hope that's going to work. But aren't they just the most adorable tags? They're just gorgeous, aren't they? So I thought that we could um, have a go at making some very similar to this. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is obviously, as you can probably see, they're all basically um, covered with sheet music. That's the background. So in my first kind of, or my, you know, as my first thing, I'm going to just make the tags basically from sheet music. So all I'm going to do, I like to use this five by seven card. I know that I've mentioned this before. It's just from like a card making um, set and I like to buy it for the envelopes because I like the craft coloured envelopes. So obviously then I end up with all these, you know, card bases left and um, they just, you know, they're ideal for kind of tags and journaling cards really because they're nice and stiff um, and thick, you know, good quality cards. So I'm going to make them like this. I may make some different sizes I'm just kind of having a look I mean she has obviously made hers you know very regular sized or not very regular but you know she's made them all the same size so perhaps I should try and try and make them similar sizes I don't know um as you know I'm not particularly good at following a sort of method and uh no doubt we'll go off at a tangent somewhere down the line but let's try and do them all similar size then um, to begin with. I'm not going to obviously make as many as she has, but just kind of a few. So again, I've got some here. This is just my coffee uh, dyed background page that I've got here left over from a different project. So again, just handy to just use up some bits from my desk. So I'm just going to chop this down again to a sort of shape and size of a tag. And then here I'm going to end up with obviously a hugely skinny tag, but that's fine. You know, hopefully we'll end up with something, something sort of loosely, <laughs> not necessarily resembling those, but, you know, drawn from those. And then I've got some sheet music. Now, again, I've got two different um, sheet musics here. And this one, as you can see, it's not so busy. To me, this looks not so busy. I mean, again, I don't read music, but I imagine that <laughs> this is very full on. Um, and this maybe not so, I don't know, maybe this is very fast, I, I haven't got a clue. Um, but again, because I obviously want the sheet music showing up quite a bit, because I'm trying to, in, you know, um, not Im emulate this, but, you know, take inspiration from here. I'm thinking that the not very busy one may get lost, because these aren't the biggest tags in the world. You know, it may not be that visible. So I'm not going to use this, I'm going to use the much more busy um, sheet music I think so that I really get the the sheet music effect so this is just a single um, sheet of sheet music if that makes sense so I'm just going to tear that down so it's a bit easier to work from and then all I'm going to do is get gluing my tags down on the sheet music so I'm just going to literally glue them all down and then cut around them. This is just, you know, how I find this quite easy to do. But of course, you know, if you find it easier to stick the whole sheet of card down first or something like that, then, you know, this is just kind of my method that I like to do. And as we always say, there's no rules just because I'm doing it this way today. I may well come across a different method that suits me better another day. Um, but, you know, do your own kind of style how suits you best. So, Let's just glue these down like that. Okay, so I want to obviously glue all of these down like that. Try and get, try and get three kind of across the width, hopefully. 
that's only just going to fit so I'm just going to see if I go for the skinny one that's going to obviously squeeze in there a little bit better so again just you know blobbing down my glue okie dokie like that okay and I just like to spread the glue out with my gift card here or loyalty card it might be I'm not sure okay and then I'm going to turn my sheet music around now I have to bear it in mind it's not that um what's the word it, the sheet music doesn't continue at the top so it only actually goes to about there um okay but that's fine I can just try and stick these as far down as possible close to the others so just again glue around them and then just stick them down Oops. okay so we've got that one there okie dokie and we'll just do the next one I mean, I might have made these tags a little bit on the fat side, if I'm truthful, because um, they're not the tallest tags in the world. I do often use the 5x7 card the other way round, if you see what I mean, so that my tags can be a lot longer. Um, it was just because, obviously, I was doing this video and I thought, well, let's try and get as many as we can done. And so I'm hoping that <laughs> doing smaller ones is going to be you know, nice and easy to do. We'll see. <laughs> it may not transpire that way. Okay, so just press that down and then just about we can fit that one on there. So, oops, come on glue. Okie dokie. Have to excuse my fingers, I've been um, obviously working on something else already today. So I already, I'm covered in ink, I'm covered in glue, just, yeah, path the course really, but yeah, just very messy, very messy already. So um, I do apologize. Okay, so glue that one down as well. Okie dokie, right. So I'm just going to go in very roughly first because it's easier once this is a smaller piece. So I'm just going to kind of trim these down first so it's more manageable to handle. Okay, right. Okie dokie. And then I'm going to just go around and trim out my tags. So this one. I mean, I do just think sheet music, it's the most beautiful thing, isn't it? It's, um, you know, really great as a background, to be honest. There's nothing really it doesn't work with. It just seems to go with every single thing. So, um, yeah, I do really love, love using the sheet music. Maybe that's why Pinterest is constantly showing that particular um, page or pin or whatever maybe that's why it constantly shows that to me maybe I look at you know maybe I'm always drawn to the things with sheet music I'm not sure but I do really love it okay now she has not stitched around her tags or anything like that so we're not going to be doing any sewing around them but of course you know you could do sewing around them but hers just looks so pretty and I thought well they're not stitched or anything they just stand out on their own um you know they don't need the stitch in or anything they just look gorgeous just exactly as they are so i'm going to um you know try my best to just make them very similar to hers well similar similar-ish they probably will turn out completely different looking but Okay, I mean Pinterest, I absolutely love it. I, I don't really know as I'm quite using it properly, to be honest, but 
It's one big kind of rabbit hole, isn't it? Once you start looking for one thing, then that pin just leads you on to something else and something else and something else and something else. And before you know it, you've wild away kind of hours on Pinterest. And um, I always remember talking to a friend once and she kind of said, you know, the thing is I spend so much time looking on Pinterest that I actually end up making nothing, you know, because it's just sapped up all my time looking on Pinterest, you know. And I think that is what happens a bit on Pinterest, isn't it? Because there's so many amazingly gorgeous things on there to look at, you end up kind of not really actually doing what you set out to do. Um, and sometimes not ending up doing anything, in fact, because you're just so, <laughs> so busy kind of looking on Pinterest. Right, get rid of all of my bits of paper. So, we've got our foundation pieces. And thankfully, this sheet music's got words on it, so it's obviously making it much easier to know which way's the right way up, because otherwise I would not have a clue. Okay, right, so we've got six. I mean, obviously she had nine, but that's absolutely fine. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut them to tag shapes. And again, you know, mine are not, um, you know, uniform in size. Hers obviously were. So I'm not going to kind of use any sort of template or anything like that. I'm just going to cut the corners, you know, as and, not as and when, but, you know, just as they come out. Okie dokie. But I think that's the great thing with um, tags, isn't it? You know, they don't have to be a particular specification. They don't have to be a particular size. You know, I, again, I have seen um, things on Pinterest where the tags are very short, fat, stumpy ones. Um, I mean, I haven't really made short, fat, stumpy tags, I don't think. But they look so cute. So that's the thing with tags. You can really kind of tailor them to your supplies that you've actually got. You know, you don't have to kind of have a particular size card left. You can have teeny, teeny ones. You can have big ones. You know, anything at all goes when it comes to tags. Well, and junk journals, you know, generally. Or journal, journals generally. Okay, right. Okay, right, there we go. Now, she has got a lot of florally ones and then she's got that gorgeous rabbit tag, which just, I mean, he kind of steals the show, doesn't he? I mean, obviously she's got these birds and things like that as well. Um, and, you know, they look like they're faux postage stamps that she's made. So again, I'm just going to kind of have a little look through my supplies and see what types of images I can pull in for this. Okay, so I have now um, sorted out a few little images here. So I've got this little image from the Victoria Plum book that I used, oh gosh, a really long time ago, I think when I did the using images, book images in your journals. Um, it's from the Victoria Plum annual um, vintage book. So this was just floating on my desk. I've got some of my fussy cut butterflies, um, you know, the freebie that's on my website. Might use those, might not, not sure. And then I've got this gorgeous book. Now, I'm not sure whether I have shown you this book or not. I feel like I have, but I might be wrong. Um, picked it up quite a long time ago, but it's so beautiful. It's 1983, so to me, that doesn't feel hugely vintage. But, um, you know, they do say anything over 20 years, so I mean, I guess it is. Um, but it's just got the most cute pictures in here. So if you were looking for this, it's In My Garden, and it's by M. E. Eldridge. 1983 um yeah so that's what this book is but the reason i pulled this book in is because obviously this image here that's of this bunny i thought there was some similar in here not necessarily of a bunny but maybe of birds and things like that because she's actually kind of she's not fussy cut around that or anything she's just literally cut out a square leaving all the white in the background and things and just gone you know gone for it like that so we'll see whether we can find a similar-ish kind of picture. Something that I can just kind of use with the white background. So let's just have a look. I mean, the problem is with this book, it's another one of those books that's so gorgeous. It's really hard to actually cut into because everything on here is just absolutely, you know, cute as anything. 
Um, so yeah, it's another one of those books that, you know, you have to really study the page and kind of go, which side do I want to actually use? So <laughs> that being said, on the back, I've got kind of texty parts here. So I can safely kind of tear out this cute little, um, I don't know whether these are hamsters or mice or what these are. Um, you know, Dormouse, it says. Uh, right, so I could tear this out and it's only kind of here affecting the text. So let's do that. Now, again, she had cut hers. I'm going to tear mine. I'm not so keen on the, you know, the straight edges. Obviously, I like it in other people's work because of the fact I'm so drawn to her tags. But for me, the, tour, uh, the straight edges, they just don't really kind of work for me. So this to me looks like it should go sort of maybe on this tag because it's a narrower piece. So again, I'm just going to kind of tear that down like that, I think. So that's going to be my, you know, emulating the bunny tag. Then, of course, you know, this isn't really emulating any tag. She didn't have any with a kind of kid's character. But, you know, this is my take on, on the inspirational kind of images you know of her tags i'm not trying to actually you know rip off her <laughs> rip off her tags completely so again just going to tear that down because obviously at the moment this is quite big on any of these tags it's going to actually take up quite a bit of room so i might have to actually get rid of some of this which is a bit of a shame but just going in there like that okay so i mean that's just such a cute image isn't it so i'll just put that there and then i've got one of my clocks which again obviously i would fussy cut this normally but i'm going to just try and tear around it again this was just kind of floating on my desk and i just thought i would again try and sort of see if i can achieve something similar but using the same concept of leaving the white in the background so that may be on here because it's quite a small image so just having a look now, some of these she just did as like a postage stamp, if you see, and actually didn't have any other sort of what I would call like focal point. The focal point was the postage stamp. So what we can do is again, let's go back into this book. Oh, now this is going to be tricky trying to find a page without, without gorgeous images on the back. So... What I'm looking for really are images that I can now make a postage stamp from. So for instance here, if this were kind of smaller, I could kind of potentially make that into a postage stamp. Obviously that's too big. But I did notice that there were some butterflies and things. I mean, there's a cute little bee there. Uh, okay, we've got a butterfly here and we've got some butterflies here. Oh, I can't bring myself to cut those ones because they're going to be... Oh, in with these gorgeous little uh, creatures. So, let's have a look. Uh, this is really awful. This book is just so pretty. I don't want to actually cut into any of it. Oh, I did not pick this book very well, did I? At all. Well, right, I'm going to take this down. Like this. And to be fair, this book also has got some gorgeous flowers that again, just, you know, bringing in her work again. She has got lots of flowers here that she's obviously cut out of books and she's kind of left all the white showing. Now, personally, again, that's something that I probably wouldn't do. I'd be inclined to try and ink up the white and disguise it. But doesn't it look gorgeous? You know, it just works perfectly on what she's actually done here. So I might try and do something like that. So let's have a look here. Right, need to do this carefully I'm thinking if we cut around this we could potentially make a little stamp from here in fact I wonder whether that would fit in my one inch circle uh this isn't this isn't a one inch circle sorry it's a mm, one and a half inch circle mm, gotta be careful here I could end up cutting that gorgeous little uh, hedgehog on the other side so let's just have a look here right so I'm not going to get the whole thing in but that's fine I don't mind don't mind a little bit missing so if I just pop that there like 
like that. Okay. And then she then mounted her circle onto like another color and then onto another color as well. So <clears throat> let's have a look and see. Just again, rummaging on my desk, seeing what I've got that might be useful to be able to use, you know, as a color. Can't see anything on my desk, but I've got my scraps pile here. Again, it needs emptying again. Honestly, that's like a never ending job, isn't it? Like keep, you know, whittling down the um, the pile of scraps. Okay, let's have a look. Right, so for instance here, that might look quite pretty on there. So I think what I'm going to do is ink this up very lightly round the edge, like that. I've not even dipped this into the vintage photo, so it's literally I'm working with, you know, whatever is remaining on there. And then I'm going to pop it here like that. So let's just glue that down. Oops. Oh gosh, this is going to be one of those videos. Right, let me get some new glue. Okay, so I've got some fresh glue. And we're just going to pop this down onto this paper. Now this is my food coloured paper and as you can see it's in this gorgeous delicate pink colour so hopefully it's going to look quite pretty on one of these tags so there we go and I'm just going to cut around that like this okay and then what she's also done, I mean, she's got here postage and one pound. Um, I might have some sort of postage type stamps that I could use to get that effect, you know, aside from my postmark. So let me just again bring my little posts, not post, my, my stamps in. Because I know that I did have a lot of kind of postage type stamps. And these were those ones that I sorted recently in my Tidy Friday and I just kept out some of my sort of favourites. So, I mean, I've got this one. It's obviously, you know, this is going to be too big, but I could possibly, you know, potentially use some of it. So, let's have a look and see what else might be, might be kind of good. Oh, I've got that little number one. That might be quite good for one of these, actually. Mm. Okay, right, let's do that. So, just going to put this back. Whoa, lost one into the bin there. It just dropped out into the bin. Luckily, I spotted it and it didn't get lost in the bin. Oops, and sorry, whilst I'm just doing this, I've spotted another thing in my craft cart that actually would be ideal for this project. So, I just grabbed that out at the same time. Okay, right, go back in there. So here, what I'm going to do, oh, actually, look, I think that will fit on there, unbelievably. So what I might do is just stamp this in a different colour. Now, I recently bought a replacement for my Victorian velvet. Obviously, as you can see, I haven't opened it yet, but I got Distress Oxide rather than Distress Ink. Now, my Victorian velvet is a ready colour. For some reason, this has got a pink um on here and it's looking very pink here. So let's have a stamp this off just to see if this is going to be pink or red because it might just be too pale. Definitely this is not the same colour as my Victorian velvet that I had before because my Victorian velvet before was um, you know pretty red. Right so what I'm going to do is just trim off this section of the stamp where it's kind of making those edges. Can you see? Okay, right. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back in. Oh, this is going to be very tricky trying to fit it on here. So let's just try. Okay. 
not too bad. And I think I'll just do the same at the bottom because, um, you know, I don't know really what else I'd put there. She's got obviously one pound. I don't have anything that would be like that. So that's fine. Looks, you know, pretty good. Right, so let's put that stamp out the way now for a moment. And then what I think I would do is, yeah, I think what I would like to do probably, let's just take this down slightly more in size. That stamp only literally just fitted on here. Can you see that? Actually, I was going to stick it on here. I'm not going to. So let's just have a look because I must have something else. Ah, here we go. Here we go. I have got some more of my food coloured paper, but this one is obviously a darker colour. So that's perfect because obviously that's going to just be, you know, just right for um, looking, you know, a bit different to what's on behind it, if you see what I mean. So there we go. Okay. I might be being a bit ambitious even doing six, you know, in this video because I'm not sure how long I've been filming for because I've had to stop and start several times already, but I'm feeling this is <laughs> this is dragging on a bit already. So uh yeah, I might have been a little bit over over ambitious. So I'm just going to cut my postage stamp out. Okay, just using my zigzag scissors that were kindly gifted to me by Carol. Oops. Okay, and then I'm going to just ink this with that pink, just around that very edge. So it's hopefully not really going on to that other paper too much, but just darkening up the, you know, background page okay so that's that so I might have to just cut this down to just maybe three three or four tags I think now what did I do with those right so we've got the mouse we've got the clock we've got Victoria Plum let's put these two out of the way because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get around to doing those now and now we've got a little postage stamp oops okay so they're all really, really cute, aren't they? Now, I'm just going to have a look here. Oh gosh, again, this is just so tough to actually kind of pick pick what I'm cutting because this has got a great image there of um, the butterfly. Hmm, this is really hard. Well, let's just go for it. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly fussy cut this. Now I'm going to kiss cut this because that's kind of how she did it. And then as I say, I mean, she didn't kind of get rid of her white edges or anything, but it just looked really, really good. So let's just give that a try. You know, sometimes maybe we go a bit mad or maybe I go a bit mad thinking everything has to be inked. And, you know, I mean, actually, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's going to look just as good not inked. I mean, clearly on her tags, it looked awesome not being inked. Okay. I might not really need this whole bottom bit because it might be that this would be too long now for the tag, but we'll see. So for me, that just goes perfectly with this one here, with the postage stamp that we just made. I mean, it just, yeah, couldn't go any better, could it, to be honest? So I think what I'm going to do is just ink that up with the vintage photo. So again, I'm just going to, oops, dab this off because obviously I used that Victorian velvet just now. I probably should change my sponge. Never mind. Right, I will ink it up and then if I use the Victorian velvet again, I might change my sponge then. Okay. 
So she's done a lot of inking around hers. As I say, she didn't do any um, stitching or anything, but she did ink a lot around the edges. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Like that. In fact, I'll ink all three, uh, all four of the tags, I think, while we're here. Just to save a little bit of time. And then we might at least get four of them done. Okay, and then this one. So this one's just tiny. Well, it's not that tiny, to be fair. It just feels tiny compared to the others. So that's that one. And then this one here. Okay, right, looking good. So let's move this now out of the way. And then all she's literally done, so I mean it really is quite a simple sort of tag. She's just got her bits on there like that. She did stamp a um, postmark stamp, so I will I think do that. But that's kind of all she did. And then she had a couple of black words. Again, I can't see what her black words say. Um, but you know, that's no problem. So I'm going to just tear this off here. So my flowers aren't hanging completely off. Okay, and then let's glue these down. Okay. Just pop this one down here, like that. Okie dokie, and then I'm going to put my postage stamp on here, like that. So, I mean, actually a lot of this is prep work, and once you've actually prepped your stuff, I mean, the actual tags kind of come in together pretty quickly now. So, um, yeah, some of it's just kind of all about the prep. Okay. I love this faux postage stamp. I really, really love it. So I may have to um, make a few more of those. Really, really, really nice. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab in my postmark stamp. Now, again, mine is kind of quite big, so... I think what I'm going to try and do is just really stamp here more than just the circle rather than the whole thing. And what colour shall I stamp that? Maybe in the timber brown. So let me just grab my timber brown stays on. Yeah, I didn't want it kind of in black necessarily. Hers is quite pale, so mine is still pretty dark compared to hers, but that's fine. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of go just here. Oh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And she had a couple of black words on hers, so I'm just going to grab maybe a little black word. Okay. Oh, I've just got loving. Oh, well, that's fine. Again, I need to kind of now print off some more black words. So, just go around there. I'm just going to give that a bit more of a lift. Uh, got too many inks open here. I'm <laughs> trying to focus and remember where I'm dipping my ink. She had that kind of to the side. I'm just going to pop that there. So, okay. Just add that glue off because it seemed to have quite a lot on there. There we go. Yay, tag number one. 
Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Right, I'm going to put that to one side and we will do the next one. So, now by the looks of things, she's pretty much put a postmark stamp on all of them actually. So, including the one with the um, rabbit. So, this is my kind of emulation of the one with the rabbit. And if you can see, she's put a postmark here. Now she's got some splatters or splashes there um, on there. Obviously, I don't know how she's done those. I'm kind of thinking we could maybe do one of those ones that um, <laughs> that we did before that I made that hideous job of with the, um, you know, 49 dragonflies when I kind of was inspired by her stuff. The only thing is these splats are going to come out very, very dark. Oops, oh, that's not really working at all. Okay. No, that's not working. Okay, I'm not going to do that because that's not really going very well. I uh, wonder what else I could use. No doubt loads of you are actually kind of shouting and kind of saying, yo, oh, you could use this or you could use that. I can't think off the top of my head, really, um, of something that would be just ideal. Uh, <laughs> yep, I mean, there's probably loads of things that I could use, but I just can't actually think off the top of my head. But I am just looking, and where I thought she hadn't inked at all, I think she has slightly inked, actually, around her piece. So I am just going to go in and just ink around, but not ink him up if that makes sense. So I'm literally doing that sort of right on the edge so he just stands out a little bit like that. Okay. Uh, I'm still trying to think what I could actually use to add a splatter. I mean, I've got my, I've got my water pens now, which I had bought recently. Uh, which one I have filled with water. So I filled this one. Yeah. Let's just have a look. If I if I could do any kind of sort of splat type effect with that. I probably can't to be honest, but let's try dipping this into the Victorian velvet. It's probably just going to look like a a ginormous mess, but and then what if I splat that? No, no, that didn't work. Honestly, I just embarrassed myself. Just embarrassed myself, really, with the things that I, you know, <laughs> come on and try. Oh, this is very annoying. What if I did, oh, I don't know. Um, and this is why I very rarely get out my, <laughs> my arty type supplies because I just don't know how to use them, if I'm truthful. So I'm now thinking perhaps I could do something similar, like with a stipple effect. So let's just try that. Let me get rid of that page in case I've got water still on there. So I'm just going to stipple around here. Okay. And then just a little bit down here, I think. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? It looks okay. Did she stipple anywhere on the tag? I don't think she did. Okay, so yeah, I quite like how that turned out. So by fluke, it's turned out okay. <laughs> right, got there eventually. And again, I'm going to just glue this on. Okie doke. Just glue this down to this side so we've got those nice bits of sheet music still showing. Okay. And then again, I'm just going to do a little tiny postage mark stamp up the top. Again, I'm just going to do it in the brown, the timber brown. Okay, just like that. 
And then she's actually got a leaf on hers, but I just spotted this that was laying around on my desk. And I thought, well, perhaps I could use that actually. You know, it just gets that off of my desk. It's a die cut from goodness, goodness knows when. Um, I think it might have been a K and Company one. I've had it for years. And obviously I have been hoarding it, but now it's just been buried under my desk, so I couldn't even see it, to be honest. So I'm thinking could have that maybe off to the side. Otherwise, I'm just covering up my stipple, stippled effect, the pink thing that I just did. That's, yeah, that's, oh, I don't know. It's kind of better here. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter if I cover up that stippled bit, does it? So I just pop this one down. I'm actually using my slow cooker, first time in ages, and no doubt I'm going to repeat myself in another video now. <laughs> because, um, yeah, I'm obviously filming this ahead, and no doubt when I'm doing one that's more current, I will probably start repeating myself. But, yeah, I can smell the dinner now wafting up. I hardly ever use it, and um, it was my son, really, who kind of said, Oh, Mum, you know, we haven't used that for a really long time. And I thought, yeah, he's right, actually. And it just makes life so easy doesn't it being able to actually just oh I've got more more black words actually look that's okay I shall use this special moments um it just makes life really easy because I just threw in you know just a bunch of different things really I just had some frozen vegetables and just um threw in I actually had a whole frozen bag of like casserole type vegetables so I threw that all in and um, then just some herbs and things like that. And uh, yeah, it smells really, really tasty. And a stock cube, obviously. Okay, I'm going to have that there, I think. Um, yeah, and it smells really nice. We call our slow cooker Fred. I'm sure I've probably said all this before. So... We like to say then, oh, Fred's cooked for us tonight. Okay. Right, so that's that, that one done. Put that to one side. Right, the next one is going to be the Victoria Plum, I think. So, again, just bring her in. Now, shall I just, again, just really ink on the edges, just so she stands out slightly. down there I mean she's so cute isn't she I'm tempted to cut out another one of these oh I can I can do this one I was worried that I was going to cut into something on the other side but luckily there wasn't really anything on the other side where this particular flower is okay so again I'm sort of kiss cutting around it so leaving the white all there. Okay, don't want the bee. Much as he might be sort of cute, don't want him in here. Oh, this is super fiddly. Okay, dokie, and then just. Trim that down. Okay. Oh, I thought that was going to look really good. I'm not sure now that that's quite the right flower, actually. Um, let me just see what I have floating. I have got some strawberries here. I mean, I know the strawberries, they're not flowers at all. But they're a similar concept, aren't they? So, um... I might just have the strawberries instead. They look really cute. I mean, I've got other flowers here, but actually these, I think, might just be even cuter than the flowers. So, yeah, I'm going to go with those. And we'll just then 
glue her down. Yeah, it's making me feel hungry smelling that um, <laughs> that cooking. Oh, smells lovely. I hope it's going to be lovely. Okay. Oh, sorry if you heard my tummy rumbling. It's like, oh, starving. It's because it's kind of gone lunchtime now and um, I've not had my lunch yet. So, yeah, what with that and smelling the cooking... It's now making my stomach rumble, so sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. And again, just going to put one of those little black words on there. So I think we'll have again love. Did we have love before? Did we have love on the first one? Can't remember. Oops, and I nearly forgot the postmark, didn't I? So we need to have a postmark somewhere. So I'll just pop this down here. There we go. And then we'll just do postmark. Oops. Here. Yay. So cute, cute, cute. Okay, so the last one that we're going to do is this one, which clock again. I mean, obviously, this doesn't really resemble what she obviously did on hers, but hopefully, you know, it will kind of have a similar ish look by the time we've finished. And I mean, as I say, these are just. You know, I've taken just my initial inspiration, really, from her. I'm not trying to just literally outright copy her work. So, um, you know, they're going to be... They're going to, of course, be different. Okay, so that's quite nice, isn't it? And um, just wondering what... I mean, obviously, I've got memories here, so... Let's just chop that down. Oops, that's quite nice, isn't it? Just wondering, because I have got some of my numbers and obviously, you know, there's some of those that are black as well. So I was just wondering whether we could actually have a black number on here as well. So much for not inking, wasn't it? <laughs> Said, oh, there's no need to be inking everything. Now look. Now look, I'm back to inking everything. It's hard to not, I think. Okay, I'm going to do it like that, I think. So let's just get rid of these bits out of the way. And we'll just pop the number seven down. Okay, right, let's pop this down here. Like that. And then we're going to just do the flower. Okay. Okay, right. I wish I knew, um, you know, how long I'd been filming because I'm kind of thinking, have we got time to do one more? Because I had just found this, um, you know, when I picked up my stamps that was floating in my um, craft cart. And I thought, well, actually, that would maybe make quite an ideal tag as well. And I think she did have a couple with birds. Yeah, she did. I can see them. So we're going to have that on there. And then... Where's my word? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're just going to then have the little word down there. Okay. Okie dokie. Right. So that's that one. 
Okay, let's go for it. Let's do one more just with that bird image. So again, I'm wondering whether I could do that postage stamp because I loved how that turned out. Um, but I don't know whether this bird's going to fit. Well, he kind of does. I mean, a bit of him's chopped off, but not too bad. There we go. Hold on. Sorry about that. That was the door. Okay, right. Uh, let's have a look again. So to make my little postage stamp, I want to obviously pop him onto something. So I might just put him onto some coffee dyed paper, I think. So again, I'm just going to pull in that little postage um, stamp stamp, postage stamp stamp. Um, and I would just do this, I think, in... Well, I was going to do it in brown, but actually I'm wondering whether I could do something a bit more fun. So I've got teal, which, oops, I've only had for a little while. And, um, you know, it's nice to get to use something different. And I'm just thinking, I mean, he's got the most minuscule sort of teal type colour there. So it might just bring that in. If it looks awful, obviously I'll not bother using it. And I'll restamp in brown. Okay. Let's just check how that looks. Okay, let's go for that. I'm just going to put one here. Like that. And then if he's on there, I just want one more. Just there. Okie dokie. Right, let's now pop this back. So glue my bird on. Shall I just ink him a little bit around the edge? Yeah. Honestly, I mean, how long ago was I saying about the inking? And now I've done it several times, haven't I? Just, <laughs> just picked up the ink and inked things. Just can't stop doing it. Okay. Just going to pop that down here, like that. And then we're just going to cut that out. Right. Trying to make it sort of smaller. bit more down there okay it's probably as small as I can get without just cutting all of those words off okay and then I'm wondering whether if we pop that on there whether we could actually do some teal inking now obviously that stays on um, hmm. oh I don't know such a tough decision. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I've got anything close to that colour in my distress inks. I'm pretty sure I might have actually. Let's have a look. Yes. So I've got this one, Broken China, which I wonder whether this would be a similar, similar shade. Let's have a look. Oh, look. Perfect. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's pop this down here. Oh, okie doke. And oh, I'll pop it down on this one like that. Okay, just going to cut my stamp out now just exactly as we did with that pinky colour one with the butterfly. Okay, like that. Oh, come on. There we go, right. And now I just want to ink just the edges up with the teal type colour, so, or the broken china. Just trying to clean my pad off. Again, I should probably change the ink pad, but never mind. Okay. So we're 
just go around that edge. Isn't that just the most stunning colour? <gasps> I love that colour so much. Oh, that looks so pretty. I absolutely love it. Okay, pop that away. Right, now get rid of my blue because of course I didn't stamp, uh, I didn't ink up these couple of tags here. So I'll get rid of this piece of paper now, book page, so that's not in the way. Right, which one? I think it will have to be this one because this one's just a little bit on the small side. So, okay, let's again just clean my ink pad off a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to ink around the tag just like we did obviously with the others. So just want it, you know, really nicely inked around. Okay. Okie dokie. Got my postage stamp. Now, which flower or what flowers am I going to have now? So we've used a strawberry already. I'm just going to have a look. So I've got some of my fussy cut flowers, which I think I'm just going to use some of those actually, because um, they're going to obviously be, you know, easiest. And I just happen to have a whole bunch here. So let's have a look. I've got this one. That might be kind of nice. Oops. Okay, I've got that one. Let's have a look. Mm, that's quite nice. Again, that's kind of some I've had for a long, long time. Uh, we could mix it up and have like some colours on here. And what she's done. Let's just pull in the inspiration sheet again. So she's not necessarily kind of mixed the colours up together. Although she has when she's used colours, if you see what I mean. I was thinking, oh, she hasn't because I was looking at these birds. But actually where she's used a colour, and we've used teal really, she has tried to match up with her flowers. So let me just have a quick look through. Now the odds are I'm not going to really have any teal coloured flowers. So um, yeah, maybe that was a bit mistake using the teal after all. Let's just have a look. We could have like red maybe an orange. Perhaps I should have the orange up here. Oh, that's lovely. And then we could maybe have like a red down there or something. Yeah, that's really nice. So let's do that. Let's glue this one down. Okay. Probably don't really need to glue that stem down at all because to be honest that's going to just be underneath the underneath this faux postage stamp, but never mind. I'm going to put that there. Honestly, I can't stop kind of looking at this postage stamp. I love that colour so much. It just oh scrumptious absolutely scrumptious okay so we're going to just have that one there like that and then do we want these red ones or got yellow the yellow are quite nice actually kind of preferring the yellow I think so mm, the only thing is they're a little bit tricky in their shape so let me just let me just have another look through uh, hmm. okay what I might have to do is cut out here like that um, hmm. oh this is tricky and then I think I'm going to have to glue them as two different entities so this one will glue as like one flower. Okay. Like that. And then this one, 
as a sort of separate one and so okay just trim that off okie dokie just trim that down hi gorgeous Hello. did you have a nice day that's my son, he's just got in from work. Okay, right, oh no, I've just pulled that flower off completely, look. <laughs> so much for being gentle and careful. Okay, well I'm going to kind of bunch them up like that and you know, hopefully that's going to look, hopefully that's going to look fine. So let me just get these out the way again, put them away, really trying to, um, be disciplined and you know when I get things out put them straight away put them away because if I don't you know they're just going to stay out to be honest okay so glue this one down like that okay glue this one Okay, like that and then we'll just do this little one here whoops just like that okay okay so we've got a little sort of cluster of flowers going on there now and I forgot to obviously do my postmark stamp, so I'm just going to do that. Oops, I don't want to do that in the teal, so I must put that back before I end up doing it in the teal. Okay, and just going to do that kind of here, I think. Don't tempted to do it off to the side but maybe that's wrong so I'll do it here I think yeah okay and then we haven't put any words on here let me see whether I've got any other black words I still need to print some off I've just literally got the odd ham you know the odd um not handful the odd few in there so let's just do this one Just ink this up just a little bit. Again, I was taking a gamble, really, wasn't I? Because that could have had still some of the teal on it. Should we have the word down here? Oops. Well, perhaps we'll have it up there. Okay. Oops, I can't see now whether that's coming out or not, to be honest. I've, whoa, I've got my lamp on because um, it was very, very dark. It's, you know, it's one of those drizzly rainy days, so it had gone very dark. And I thought, oh, you probably won't be able to see, you know, without the lamp on. But it's brightened up now, so suddenly there's a, like a glare that was glaring straight onto the glue. Okay, and she had just punched holes into her tags and... Um, I was going to say she put the whole reinforcers, but actually it doesn't look like she's done that. And actually now I'm thinking maybe she has stitched around them. It's weird, isn't it? What you can't really see and then you kind of look closer and actually I think maybe she has stitched around. So I probably will stitch around mine after all. But I think what I'll do first is I'm just going to punch holes in all of them. So I'll just do... One, two, three, whoa, four, and five. Okay, so I probably will stitch around them, um, as it looks like she did actually stitch around them. I just, I honestly couldn't really see that, to be honest, until I suddenly the light kind of caught there and if you can see it looks like she has stitched around so yes I will probably stitch around mine so I will come back in a moment 
Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine. So this is my finished tags. I've put the whole reinforcers on as well. So uh, they will, uh, I just use white stitching around and just kind of single stitched um, all around, obviously the edges of all of them. So that's those there. And obviously this was the, the inspiration for them. So yep, hopefully kind of, they're vaguely looking like they were inspired by them. Um, and yeah, so I hope that you um, enjoyed doing the tags and have fun if you do some yourself. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully see you all again in the next video. Thanks then. Bye.